Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and another Schminka Super Granulating Watercolor Swatching. Today we are going to take a look at the Glacier set. It appears that most of these colors are going to be blue or blue-ish. I mean, makes sense for glaciers. So let's get on with the swatching and see what these colors look like. Okay, starting with the first one here in the Glacier set is Glacier Blue. And it is a two pigment color, Pigment Blue 29 and Pigment Green 50. And it's re-wetting very nicely and it looks very, very bright and very vibrant so far. My kind of color. I'm just gonna put this card here so that maybe it's not so distracting as I swatch this beautiful blue. So it's pretty transparent despite the PG50, which I believe is um, opaque or semi-opaque. Maybe it'll be more opaque once we get going here. problems getting the paint to stick to my page. I think I might have rested my hand on the section of the page and left some of my hand oils or something on there. Work it in usually works better. I hope it doesn't mess up the swatch too much. Anyways, um, so right off the bat it's a really nice bright vibrant uh, blue Relatively neutral. I wouldn't say it's too warm or too cool. It's pretty neutral. I don't see any color separation happening as of yet between the blue and the green. We might not because they're probably um, pretty similar in um, tonal range. Add some water in here and mix her all up and see what our granulation is going to do. See how that dries. So once dry, I don't see a whole lot of color separation. Maybe a little bit in some of the thinner spots. You could see some of that uh, green coming through, but uh, it's a very lovely blue. I like it, and it's obviously very granular. Okay, on to the next color, which is Glacier Turquoise, uh, another two pigment color. Uh, pigment Green 50 and Pigment Violet 16. And this one too seems to be re-wetting um, quite easily. Coming off there in a nice creamy consistency. It feels like it might be just a little bit opaque. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be at least semi-opaque. And it looks like I've got a little something kind of residue on my paper. It's nice and creamy. I really wonder what I got on my paper. This is a bit annoying. If you've watched any of my other um, swatching videos in this book, you'll know that I, you you will know that I haven't had this kind of problem before getting my water to soak into the paper. Okay, so this is a very pretty color. This is the kind of color that I would probably be very attracted to. It's um, well, it's a turquoise color, and I love turquoise colors. It's on the blue side of turquoise. I know you can get turquoise that are sometimes a little green, sometimes a little blue. Um, not seeing uh, color separation as of yet. Starting to see little bits of granulation um, settle in. Just mix up the consistency here with some water. 
This is a good sized uh, sample dot that they gave me on this one, or maybe it's just because it's reactivating um, so easily, but I'm able to get quite a bit of pigment off of that little dot, which is nice. This has been an issue with some of the other colors. I want to just keep playing with it, but let's see what happens when it dries. So there we go, now that it's all dry, you can definitely see that granulation. I think if I look real close, I can actually see a difference, like color separation between the, the PG50 and the PV16. But the violet just, I think it's coming out as more of those more uh, powdery blue spots and then the green is and then the green is what looks more aqua-y in the thinner areas there. Very pretty. Okay, moving on to the third color, Glacier Green. Uh, two pigment colors, PR233 and PG50. A little surprised to see the um, PR233 in this actually, but if they're looking for a very muted greeny color that would be the way to go and so far it seems it sort of looks to me like a very muted turquoise color not quite as opaque as the last one but we'll see once I really get it activated here turquoise color. I wouldn't necessarily call it green, but um, again, relative to the other colors in this set, perhaps it is the greeniest. Oh, I can actually already see uh, color separation as well. I think this is going to be one of those like really interesting, oh that's so cool, but I don't know what to paint with it colors. <laughs> Yeah, it's doing some interesting things there now. The pink and the turquoise um, are separating. I kind of, it's bringing, it's giving me like cotton candy vibes, but, but like on a very sort of dark and muted way. Something about the turquoise and the pink together. Yeah, instantly there's like, pretty quickly, maybe not instantly, there is definite color separation and granulation going on. Can we see what this one looks like when it's all um, dried up? So once completely dry, you can definitely see color separation. The um, PR233, which I remember from other super granulating colors, is Potter's Pink, and it really looks much more purple here once mixed with the PG50, but it's still there, and you can definitely see that turquoisey green um, in the background there. Definitely not what I would uh, call the color green, but it's a very cool color. Okay, next we are moving on to Glacier Brown which is another two pigment color, uh, brown six and green 26. That one's rewetting very quickly. First I thought it was gonna be pretty opaque, but I don't think it will. Maybe it'll be semi-opaque.
soft, medium toned. I guess I'm gonna have to go with neutral brown. <laughs> At first it felt very um, cool, but there are some pops of a warmer color coming through there. So my guess is it is the, the brown six is the warmer color and the green 26 is the cooler color. And of course, it will separate little bits every now and then so that you will see some cooler spots and some warmer spots. And I actually can see as I'm moving it around, I can see some color separation between the two pigments. showing on camera but there's a spot of the reddish color there and a spot of the greenish right there next to each other I drag the brush through and it's like it moves the brown and leaves some of the green underneath it. I don't know, again, if that's coming up on camera, but that's kind of neat. Don't know if it's going to stay like that once dry, but just drop some water in here and let it, let it do its thing. once dried and you can definitely see um, the granulation and the color separation I'm not sure that it shows up as well on camera but um, the green the darkest bits do definitely have a green um, tint to them and then the red bits, uh, are, the brown bits, are quite uh, orangey, like it's a very reddish orangey brown. It, it kind of reminds me of cedar trees, actually, um, now that I'm looking at it. Bark of cedar trees has that sort of reddish hue to it, orangey hue. It's a very nice brown. Okay, and on to the last color in this set, Glacier Black, and it's made of a black pigment. Uh, pigment Black 11 and Blue Pigment, Pigment Blue 35. It's re wetting? Okay. Not as nicely as some of the other ones. I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty transparent color. going on initially is very transparent black definitely on the cool side I think I can see some of the blue pigment in there separating already think I'm going to get it any more saturated than that. That's about the most of it. Any little thoughts? Did not take much water to push that pigment out of the way. It's not a very strong combination. Let's see. I think I can see some of the color separation coming out in the top here. Let's see how it dries up. It's 
So now that it's dried, I can see a very, very faint color separation between the black and the blue pigments. Uh, it's subtle. The colors are relatively close, I think, in tone, so it's quite subtle. And the granulation is actually a little bit subtle too, but it's definitely still there. It's a very thin, washy um, black on the cool side. Okay, and on to pigment breakdown. Unfortunately, again, this set is split up <laughs> on my sheet here. I got one all the way over here by himself and the other four are down here, but that's okay. I will survive. So looking first at Glacier Blue, which is Pigment Blue 29 and Pigment Green 50. And I am almost positive we've seen, actually I am positive, we've seen both these colors. Um, we should know by now, Pigment Blue 29, well, we should know by now if you've seen any of my, my other videos swatching these super granulating colors, that Pigment Blue 29 is French Ultramarine. And I'm pretty sure Pigment Green 50 is Cobalt Turquoise. Our granulating blue, which has shown up in many of the super granulating colors. And yeah, there is the cobalt turquoise PG50, which is a mildly granulating, semi opaque color and happens to be one of my favorite. Actually, it's a color I love and don't have and want to add to my palette. So that uh, greeny turquoise color of the PG50 just cools off the ultramarine a tad but it, used, it still see, it still feels very ultramarine-y to me. Uh, it's very nice. Okay moving on to Glacier Turquoise. Of course we've got the PG50 here again as well as Pigment Violet 16 which I know we have also seen in other colors of the super granulating line. It definitely feels very turquoise-y to me. Uh, definitely on the blue side very granular, semi-opaque. The color separation is there, but uh, subtle. You have to look at it to see spots that just seem a little bit more greeny and spots that seem a little bit more violety, which actually they kind of just look more blue. So yeah, the PG50, the Cobalt Turquoise, and the PV16 is Manganese Violet. I feel like we've seen these two colors in a these two pigments in a different color of the super granulating line, but they were mixed with another one. And I think I remember commenting that I thought those two colors would look kind of cool mixed together. And uh, lo and behold, they do. <laughs> okay, on to Glacier Green. Um, again, it's not really what I would call a green. I'm sorry if you hear my chair squeaking in the background. I, I have a very squeaky chair. I'm trying not to move, but. Grace, Glacier Green, again, it's not what I would really call a green color. Uh, again, it's one of those colors I wouldn't really know how to categorize, but I guess they didn't either and they gave it the name green. <laughs> but we've got PR233, which um, I remember being Potter's Pink, and again, Cobalt Turquoise, the PG50. So there's the Potter's Pink. It's not showing up in as many colors as the French Ultramarine has, but it's shown up a few times, this Potter's Pink. I'm starting to think I'm going to add it to a list of colors that I want to add to my collection, as I don't have it yet. And the Cobalt Turquoise. And these, this really, really reminds me of another color uh, in the super granulating range. Um, which one is it? Oh, probably Haze Pink. So Hayes Pink has that uh, pigment red 233 as well as it's got a pigment blue 36. Um, so it's not the PG50, but it is a blue 36. And they're similar, but they're not the same. They're similar. So Glacier Green, it's a very cool color. I have no idea what I might paint with this color, but it is a very fun color. Okay, moving on to Glacier Brown. It is definitely brown. And it's quite a cool brown, actually. It's got the pigment brown six and the pigment green twenty six, and together they it's it's um if I remember correctly, the pigment brown six is quite a warm orangey brown, and then the green together, you know, green and orange would complement each other. Green and red they complement each other in those areas on the color wheel, and so we've got uh, a nice um, 
desaturated color that I couldn't tell you if it's warm or cool because it's got warm spots and it's got cool spots. So yeah, Mars Brown, Pigment Brown 6. It is a very uh, orangey sort of brown. It granulates, but the pigments, the particles are very fine. It's very finely ground, but they do settle. And the Pigment Green 26 um, is the Cobalt Green Dark which is another color I don't have. It's shown up a couple times and it's very dark, semi-opaque, um, and, and like the Mars Brown, it also granulates, but the particles are very fine. So it actually granulates more together than what I would have expected looking at those two colors separately. Very nice though, very nice. Would be easy enough to uh, mix yourself if you happen to have those colors. I don't know that they're very common colors, but maybe some people do, or maybe you can find colors that are similar. Um, I don't know if maybe a perlin green or something like that would work instead of the dark cobalt. Uh, it'd be interesting to play with though. Okay, and the last one, Glacier Black, and it definitely feels more like a gray to me than a black because it is very transparent and it's very cool. Of course, it's got that pigment blue 35 in there. Um, the color separation, very uh, subtle. The granulation is nice, but the Pigment Black 11, we've seen this a few times in a few other colors. And it is Mars Black, our nice transparent granulating black. And Pigment Blue 35, Cobalt Azure. Also very transparent. Um, it has a very mild granulation to it. The granulation is in there. The particles are just very um, fine. I don't know if I can get that focus. The so yeah, it does um, granulate. It's just that the particles are very finely ground. So there is a look at our Glacier set of super granulating watercolors, and that was set seven of eight. One left in our super granulating colors. It's a very interesting set. I like it. I don't know that I would utilize all the colors in this set, but they were very fun to look at and swatch out here. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, if you did enjoy it, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel get seen by other people. So if you like this type of video and you want to see the results of that very last set, you might as well subscribe so you can uh, get a little notification. And uh, yeah, until the next video, I hope you have a great day. Bye.